May your beards be thick and your gold satchels heavy. Rock and stone, everyone. Welcome back to episode 10 of the How to Paint Deep Rock Galactic, the board game. Today I'm going to be covering the steps I did to paint up the Glyphid Exploder. I ended up using a mix of Army Painter Speed Paints and inks and glazes to achieve the table-ready model. I start out here with some Dollar Rowney Flame Orange Acrylic Ink. I mix that in with some homemade Lamy and Medium. I use the recipe as described on Geek Gaming Scenic's channel by Luke. Lamy and Medium, if you're not aware, it's marketed and sold by Games Workshop. It has a number of uses. One includes thinning down your paints and inks to a glaze level. It's not like just adding water where if you get too much, the pigments separate. Um, the the Lamian medium will kind of keep it together because there's a little bit of matte medium mixed in with the water in the recipe. You can see that it nicely thins down this ink. So if I put on a thin layer at the peaks of these pustule domes, it almost turns into a light yellow orange. And then if I continue to layer it up at the base of the domes, it becomes that darker color orange. This was the goal I wanted to achieve to make it appear that the top of the pustule sacs were bright and ready to explode while blending that lower portion in with a darker orange and eventually the reddish brown carapace I'll be adding later on.
Next, I decided to prepare the lower legs and the body with the initial darker glaze of the flame orange, which was a four to one mix of ink to gloss glaze. I want this to help shade up the speed paint color when I apply it to blend in more of that red orange hue with the brown overcoat on the carapace, just to make the whole model flow a little better color wise. I mix up a one-to-one -one red crimson ink to gloss glaze to help blend in the transitions between the light and dark orange areas. I hit the underside, under the legs, and the carapace all around with this as well. I pulled out the highest in quality 1981 plastic army men I could find in my old toy box. This fine German communications officer was coated with a white prime and then I took that flame orange ink glaze from before and spread it all over him as a base. First up to test over that was hardened leather which gave a pleasant effect but it wasn't as rich and dark brown as the game screenshots. I was hoping for something darker here. I tried the dark wood straight up as well on the other side 
It just didn't mingle that well with that orange glaze on its own. I settled on a middle ground, two drops of dark wood, three drops of hardened leather, and a drop of speed paint medium. This gave me a, the dark reddish brown hue I was seeking when I painted over the glaze, and I decided to go with that. I follow this up with some of my basic burnt umber wash and try to blend in the transitions between the legs, carapace region, and the pustules on the back and arms. I did a little of that same brown wash on the rock and then I tried doing some dry brushing with a lighter gray and painted a few random spots as well for variety.
I came back and did a dry brush on the front teeth with some skeleton bone with a little matte white mixed in it to lighten it up a little more. To a successful mission. And here we are, the finished Exploder. I actually had a lot of fun with this model. It was small, but these were some unique challenges for me, trying to make the, the pustules look decent, uh, you know, brighter at the top, like they're gonna explode. So that was, a, that was a new challenge for me, good experiments. Next episode is probably gonna be the Spitballers here. I went with a earthy one and a more poppy, more colorful, brighter one. So those are the two schemes I ended up playing with. As always, I appreciate everyone who stopped by and gave this video a look over. And the likes and subscribes have been appreciated as well. I hope this one helps you get painting your Exploder and Deep Rock Galactic. I'll see you soon. Yeah.